Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic making the case for some patience, saying today that based on current dynamics in the macro economy, I feel the policy is appropriately restrictive. I think we should be cautious and patient and let the restrictive policy continue to influence the economy lest we risk tightening too much and inflicting unnecessary pain. Hey, Rick, does that equal we're going to pause in September and then TBD November? I mean, I think so. I mean, I, listen, I, I think the Fed should be done. Uh, I certainly think, given this number, unless you got something very significant on, uh, on, on CPI, I think they're not going in September. Listen, I think when you dig in, and there's something that's really important, and this number embodies that, you know, why do 736,000 people come back in the labor force? The lower income strata in this country are having a tougher time. Yeah. You see that in terms of, you know, by the way, look at the earnings reports from the dollar generals, et cetera. The lower income strata is having a, having a tougher go. You see credit card balances mm -hmm. rise. Listen, I just think we are, we're seeing, you know, when you lift rates this much, you benefit the higher income who are the savers and you hurt the borrowers. I think Tom Keen was saying, you know, look at where mortgage rates are. I think the Fed should stop. Okay. And I think we're at a place and today certainly gives them further further uh, information or, or, uh, or justification for that. So, Rick, do you buy the front end on that? I mean, you know, we like the front end of the curve, and uh, you know, we uh, we've been talking about on uh, TV for a while. We like holding, you know, the front end. I mean, you get paid, you get paid if you buy CP, et cetera. You get paid six percent. It's been incredible, or about cheap as six percent. It's incredible carry. But I think now that you can actually extend that a bit further on the curve. You know, we talked about I think last month, and we've been adding some out to the belly of the curve because you're pricing in. If you believe the Fed is done, and you're not paying a lot for the forwards, because the markets have priced out a lot of those cuts, that you can actually extend a bit further out the curve today, lock in some of these yields, not just in treasuries, but in parts of the credit market, mortgage market, securitization market. So I think you can take, you can put your shoulder behind a bit more of interest rate exposure than we then, um, mm -hmm. and it's been the case certainly over the last few months. So what do you do at the long end? Where's gonna be the top, say, then for the <laughs> tenure? Not a lot is to, uh, in terms of what do you do with it. Like, I mean, I think the very back end of the curve, unless you're a pension fund, a life insurance company with an inverted yield curve, it's not a hedge to risk because if, if inflation is higher, it's going to hit risk and the back end of the curve. I don't think it's a lot to do with it. And like, like I say, unless you're, you're defeasing or you're matching a liability as a pension or a life insurance company. So I think, listen, I, I, think, I think hiding it, it's not hiding, like clipping, a, clipping an awful lot of yields yeah. in the front to the belly of the curve makes sense. The 10 year is sort of, you know, do I think rates can move a bit higher from where they are in the 10-year point? I still think they can go a bit higher. You know, they strike me. Do you have some interest rate exposure out to the 10-year? Maybe. Like I said, I don't really like going further than that. But uh, but I certainly prefer being in the front to the belly and just holding that carry. 